Hi, this is Brad Constantine, and this is a podcast recording of the Old Testament. Although this is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every effort's been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. I'll be using for the text the Joseph Smith translation of the Old Testament, along with many commentaries from general authorities of the Church, BYU professors, Bible scholars, and others. This format will be very detailed, and so if you want a deep analysis of the Old Testament, you come to the right place. Thanks for your attendance. Hi there, welcome back. This is going to be for Amos chapter 1. Amos was the first of a series of prophets whose words were put into writing. He prophesied in the northern kingdom in the mid-8th century BC. Before his call as prophet, he was among the herdmen of Tekoa. Tekoa was about six miles southeast of Bethlehem and 12 miles from Jerusalem. In Amos 1 verse 1, Hebrew for a sheep breeder suggests he may have supervised other shepherds. A herdman of goats and sheep, a wool grower in Judah, he may have traveled in the northern kingdom and and Damascus. Worked with sycamore figs would have taken him into the lowland of Judah. These figs won't grow at high altitudes. Because of Amos' background with agriculture, his writings include many images he was familiar with. The book of Amos is in two sections. First, the curses on Israel and her neighbors. Second, Amos' visions are documented. So the heading reads, Amos shows the Lord's judgment upon Syria, the Philistines, Tyre, Edom, and Ammon. Verse 1, the words of Amos, who was, who was among the herdmen of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of jo- Joash, king of Israel, two years before the earthquake. The earthquake mentioned was so severe that it was used to date historical events. The only earthquake explicitly mentioned in the Old Testament. It was mentioned two and a half centuries later in Zechariah 14.5. Verse 2, And he said, The Lord will roar from Zion, meaning Jerusalem, and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the habitations or pastures of the shepherds shall mourn, and the top of Carmel shall wither. Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of Damascus, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have threshed Gilead with threshing instruments of iron. Gilead was part of the land of the east side of the river, River Jordan, inherited by the tribes of Gad, Reuben, and Manasseh. When the Syrians conquered it under Hazael, they evidently treated their captives with barbaric cruelty, crushing them under iron threshing sleds. A similar incident is recorded in Second Samuel. The expression, the three transgressions and for four, indicates that the sins alluded to have been exceedingly abundant. The same style is used in Proverbs 6.16, these six things, yea, seven. And in Matthew 18, 70 times seven, referring to an infinite number. A modern English equivalent would be the expression, a hundred and one times. The Im- Im- The implication of the idiom is that three transgressions are too many, and you have even exceeded that. That was by, and then Kiel and Delich explained, the expression therefore denotes not a small, but a large number of crimes or ungodliness in its worst form. That was taken from the Institute Manual. Verse 4, But I will send a fire into the house of Hazael, which shall devour the palaces of Ben-Hadad. I will break also the bar of Damascus, and cut off the inhabitant from the plain of Avon, and him that holdeth the scepter from the house of Eden. And the people of Syria shall go into captivity unto Kir, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of Gaza, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they carried away captive the holy or the whole captivity to deliver them to up to Edom. This passage seems to refer to the time when the Philistines raided Judah under the reign of Joram. That's in Second Chronicles 21. They sold all their captives to the arch enemy of Israel, the Edomites. Verse 7, But I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza, which shall devour the palaces thereof, and I will cut off the inhabitants from Ashdod, and him that holdeth the scepter from Ashkelon, and I will turn mine hand against Ekron, and the remnant of the Philistines shall perish, saith the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Tyrus, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they delivered up the whole captivity of Edom, and remembered not the brotherly covenant. Like Gaza, Phoenicia also sold Israel captives through, although it may be that Phoenicia bought the captives from other enemies of Israel, such as Syria, and then sold them to Edom, since there is no record of Tyre capturing Israelites directly. Verse 10, But I will send a fire on the wall of Tyrus, which shall devour the palaces thereof. 
Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of Edom, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword, and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. The Edomites were the descendants of Esau, whose name was also Edom. Thus they were closely related peoples, brothers, to Israel, but showed only bitter hatred and hostility. The Edomites were some of Israel's most determined enemies. Verse 12, But I will send a fire upon Taman, which shall devour the palaces of Basra. Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of the children of Ammon, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have ripped up the women with child of Gilead, that they might enlarge their border. The incident mentioned here is not recorded in the Old Testament, but the Ammonites were a fierce people, a fierce desert people, who often conquered parts of Israel. To kill pregnant women shows a particularly brutal nature. But I will kindle a fire in the wall of Rabbah, and it shall devour the palaces thereof, with shouting in the day of battle, with a tempest in the day of the whirlwind. And their king shall go into captivity, he and his princes together, saith the Lord. So that's the end of chapter 1 of Amos, and we'll see you next time. Is this famous Amos? Anyway, see you next time. Bye.